how did the show kind of come together and how did you become a part of it? Well, the show has actually been like five years in the making. It originally was a pitch that, that in a general meeting that came to Chris and then Chris brought it to uh, Sam, Jack and I, and it was a very terrible pitch and a very awful show that then we tried to turn into something else. And over the course of this five years, we've kind of like fine tuned it into to what you see today. The scenarios that each episode is based around, like are those real life experiences that have happened to you guys? To some degree, yeah. I would say real life experiences that got exaggerated or things that were adjacent to us that happened to someone we knew or someone we've been around that we kind of like blew up and, and kind of stretched out, yeah. For sure. Were there any topics you didn't want to touch or you were like, like, I know Chris was telling me about how the first episode was kind of loosely based on something that happened to him. No, honestly, we uh, found ourselves looking for more things that uh, were horrible experiences that we could field for episodes. There's never been a time in our room or in our friendship where we're, there's a conversation where we're afraid to to talk about it or, or sort of have it out. It's just figuring out a way to make that that funny and not sad or weird for mm. everybody else. Sam, is there something you really wanted to portray from the experience of a queer Black person in the show? I just wanted to portray a, a, a queer Black character that was a terrible person, because I don't <laughs> see enough of that. I think, you know, when you're part of a minority group, it, it's a natural instinct to always just show the best and the brightest. You know, queer people are just as complex and, and not good all the time. And I just wanted to show a character that was, you know, not uh, perfect. So what does a normal day look like if the four of you are actually just hanging out as friends? I like that, but <laughs> without, without all the and stuff. I mean, yeah. I feel like, yeah, it's, you know, yeah. silly conversations and like that eating doo-doo, whose doo-doo would you eat? Conversation was a real conversation that we had that we went back and forth about for maybe two hours. So it's very much true to life in that way. There's a, at the end of, uh, of one of the break scene of 102, there's an argument that starts of, of my character saying that it's, uh, it's bestiality to have sex on top of a giraffe. And that was a genuine argument that we had for over two hours on set mm -hmm. once it was prompted. So, you know, everybody has their own opinions and it truly turns into chaos, but that's what our friendship is. And so we just try to put that on screen. So I talked to Jack and Chris about semen for like four minutes, straight minutes. <laughs> that scene that was, was so good. I was like, you're making use of your 10 minutes. And I like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys had a season two, are there any comedians or actors you'd love to come and guest star on the show? Paul Pierce. We want Paul Pierce to come. Ooh, that would show. be good. <laughs> that would be good. I would like Black Youngster. Okay. Yeah, I like Black Youngster. He's fun. I think our show, in a nice way, is not built on, like, these amazing cameos and more of just brilliant actors and performers happening to, to you know, be a part of it. I don't think our show is really about getting, like, the most famous person. If, you know, if Denzel Washington ends up in our show, he did something wrong. And also, we did something wrong. And maybe that just shouldn't exist. Like, how do you make something serious funny and bring, you know the lightheartedness out of something dark. We just happen to be terrible people. And um, <laughs> we laugh at things we are not supposed to laugh at all the time. And something close to that did happen to Jack. And we laughed at him and we were like, ha, ah, that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, we're, you know, we're, I guess is how we do it. Yeah, I think we we laughed uh, and then forgot that you're supposed to like check in and be like, hey, man, do you feel OK? Are you safe? Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? And we just made the jokes and then eventually we made that into television. The comedy part, we don't ever have uh, any fears about. We'll figure and it out. Like the show, uh, I feel like the the jokes bring the heart. Like our first line is jokes and we'll joke and joke and then we'll be like, Hey, wow, like Lisa said, like, that's actually not cool. Are you actually okay? Because <laughs> maybe we should have tapped in on that. But we just ran on the joke train first. I feel like the show does that too. It just goes off on the jokes and then somewhere in there you start to see the heart. 
in, in the character of each person. Where did the casino setting come from? Have any of you ever worked in a casino? We're all stand-up comedians who have all played uh, casinos and casinos are miserable places to perform and also just be in if you are not like drunk and gambling. And so like, you know, they, they make you walk through their back hallways and eat in their like staff cafeterias and all of that felt like ripe for, for great comedy. There's no accountability in a casino. No one gives a as long as the money is still where the money belongs.